Hi guys, so I hope you are all enjoying your half term so far. I'm sorry that this has taken me a few days to get up, but as you imagine, it can take um, a little bit of time to record and post and all of those things. Um, but before we get started with our reading of Act 4, Scene 3, could you please make sure you have the following things on the screen? Um, if you need a moment to get those things, please pause the video now. OK, so before we get started with our reading and annotation, I just want to remind you of the summary of the scene. So the scene is set in England and Malcolm is testing the loyalty of his newest recruit, Macduff. Um, and Malcolm demeans his own nobility and professes that he would be a greater tyrant than Macbeth in the hope that um, this will persuade Macduff into um, displaying his loyalties to Scotland and their plight against um, Macbeth. Um, this attempt at reverse psychology works and Macduff is thrown into a fit of anger against the untitled tyrant Macbeth, so ultimately proving to Malcolm that Macduff is a loyal follower of his. Um, and then Ross appears with news of the slaughter of Macduff's family. Um, Macduff is finally convinced not only to engage in the rebel army, but also to take personal revenge upon Macbeth. So Malcolm's test and the news of the slaughter of his family ultimately persuades Macduff that he will fight against Macbeth. OK. So we're going to start reading and annotating. Could you please make sure your Macbeth books are now open to page 82, right at the bottom. Pause here if you need a second to do that. OK, so we're going to read each of the um, slides, then we're going to annotate them. Um, and then we'll continue that process until we get to the end. Um, there's going to be quite a few uh, chunks of the text that we're going to miss. Um, as long as we get the kind of main gist of this scene, that's completely fine. So let's get started. So scene three takes place in England before the King's Palace. Enter Malcolm and Macduff. Let us seek out some desolate shades and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword and like good men bestride our downfall and birth them. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face. That it resounds as if it felt with Scotland and yelled out like a syllable of dollar. What I believe I wail, what I what no believe and what I can redress as I shall find the time to friend I will. What you have spoke, it may be so perchance. This tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongues was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He have not touched you yet, I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me, and wisdom to offer up a weak, poor, innocent lamb to appease an angry God. I am not treacherous. Um, so here, Macduff is saying, instead of crying about um, the state of our country, um, let's hold our swords and defend our fallen homeland like honourable men, like good men. Um, each day new widows howl, new orphans cry, and new sorrows slap heaven in the face um, until it sounds like heaven itself fills Scotland's anguish and screams in pain. Um, and Malcolm says, I will avenge uh, whatever I believe is wrong, and I'll believe what I'm sure is true, and I'll put right whatever I can when the time is come. Um, and he said, this tyrant whose name blisters now, tongues, obviously referring to Macbeth, um, was once considered an honest man. Um, we have um, treated him well. He's been kind to us. Um, and Malcolm says he hasn't done anything to harm you yet. Um, he says that I am inexperienced, but maybe you're planning to win Macbeth's favour by betraying me to him. It would be smart to offer someone poor and innocent like me is a sacrificial lamb to satisfy an angry god like Macbeth. So Malcolm is convincing, um, trying to convince Macduff that he believes that Macduff is a traitor. And Macduff's obviously instant reply is, I'm not treacherous. So let's get some annotations down for that. So can we highlight, please, um, 
new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face. And we're going to annotate that. I'm not sure why the pen, I don't know, why is the pen red? Hold on, there we go. Um, we're going to annotate that with um, vivid images to describe disorder and hardships in Scotland. I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure my handwriting is neat, but it's so hard. Okay, and we're also going to highlight, please, um, he hath not touched you yet. So this is Malcolm's way of saying to Macduff, he hasn't done anything wrong. So why would you go against him? Whoops. Um, let me grab my pen. And obviously this is dramatic irony because we know for a fact that Macbeth has done something wrong to Macduff by killing his sons and wife. So um, this is dramatic irony. And as we also mentioned, this angry god represents Macbeth. Just so we are aware, as a reminder that the angry god refers to Macbeth. Pause if you need a second to get these down, and if not, we're going to move forward. Okay. But Macbeth is. A good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge, but I shall crave your pardon. That which you are my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright still, though the brightest fell. Though all things foul would wear the brows of grace, yet grace must still look so. I have lost my hopes. The chance even there where I did find my doubts, why in that rawness left your you wife and child, those precious motives, those strong lots of love without leave taking. I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonours, but mine own safeties. You may be rightly just, whatever I shall think. Bleed, bleed, poor country, great tyranny. Lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness dare not check thee, where thou thy wrongs. The title is a feared. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinks for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. Malcolm replies to Macduff claiming that he's not treacherous by saying Macbeth is. Um, even someone with a good and virtuous nature might give way to a royal command. Command, sorry. Um, my fears can't actually make you evil. Even though everything evil wants to look good, good still has to look good too. And then here, Malcolm says, maybe you have lost your hopes about me, where I find my doubts about you. And he questions why Macduff has left his wife and children vulnerable, um, questions how he could leave them behind. And he says, don't interpret my suspicions as um, kind of criticism or slander against you. Um, but he's just trying to protect himself, um, test that he is honest. And Macduff replies to this question by saying, bleed, bleed, poor country, great, tyr great tyranny. Um, he says um, about the fact that Macbeth is enjoying everything that he has stolen. Um, and he said, fare thee well, Lord, farewell. I wouldn't be the villain you think I am, even if I were offered all of Macbeth's kingdom and the riches of the East too. He's saying I would not protect that tyrant who's made our country bleed, even if I had offered, um, had been offered all of his kingdom and his riches. Okay, let's get some annotations down for this. Oop. Right, let us highlight, please, um, 
a good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. Actually, what we'll do is we'll highlight all of them and then we will annotate. So it saves me having to flick back between my highlighter and my pen. Um, let's also um, highlight, please, bleed, bleed, poor country. And um, let's also highlight angels are bright still, the, the brightest fell. Okay, now let's get some annotations down for this. It's really annoying having to switch between the highlighters and the pens. Right, for a good and virtuous nature may recoil on an imperial charge. Um, this is referencing how power can corrupt people, just as it has done for Macbeth. And this reference to a fallen angel references Lucifer. So there's a, a, a myth that um, Lucifer was a um, bright angel, a good angel, um, and he fell and um, therefore was sentenced to damnation. But we'll look at that a little bit more when we do some contextual readings. And here, bleed, bleed, poor country. Whoops. Bleed, bleed, poor country. Um, this is Macduff being patriotic, saying that he will protect his um, country from tyrants and from pain. Um, so we see that he is patriotic. Okay, pause the video now if you need a second, and if not, we're going to move on. Okay. Be not offended, I speak not in absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think with all there would be hands uplifted in my rights, and here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before more suffer more sundry ways than ever by the time that by him that shall succeed what should he be it is myself i mean in whom i know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened black macbeth will seem as pure as snow and the poor state esteem him as a lamb being compared with my confineless harms not in the legions of horrid hell become a devil more damned in evil to top macbeth Malcolm says here, do not be offended. I um, don't completely distrust you. I do think that Scotland is sinking um, under Macbeth's oppression. Um, then he continues, but even so, when I have Macbeth's head under my foot or stuck on the end of my sword, then my poor country will be plagued by worse evil than it was before. It will suffer worse and in more ways than ever under the reign of the king who follows Macbeth. Um, and Macduff says here, who are you talking about? Macduff is confused. Who are you talking about? Malcolm says, I am talking about myself. I know I have so many vices that when people see all of them exposed, evil Macbeth, black Macbeth, will seem as pure as snow. And poor Scotland will call him a sweet lamb when they compare him to me with my infinite evils. And Macduff said, even in the hell, you couldn't find a devil worse than Macbeth. So here is Mac Malcolm convincing Macduff that he would be a worse ruler, testing his loyalty. Let's grab our highlighter. OK, let's highlight, please. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. Let's also highlight Black Macbeth. And let's also highlight Horrid Hell, Devil, Damned, and Evil to the bottom here. Pause for a second if you need a moment to get that done. Okay, Scotland here is being personified. 
um, this works to show um, to illustrate the suffering of Scotland. Personification illustrates suffering. And also black Macbeth, we know that black is symbolic of evil. So this is symbolic of his evil nature. And at the bottom here, all of these words link to the semantic field of hell. And I'm just going to shorten semantic field to SF semantic field of hell um, shows Macduff's absolute disbelief at Macbeth's um, corruption. Pause for a second if you need a moment before we move on. Okay. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name, but there's no more, there's, but there's no bottom, none in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your mat matrons, and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust. My desire, all continent impediments would overbear. That did impose, oppose my will, better Macbeth than such a, and one to reign. Boundless intemperance is nature, is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of the happy throne and fall of many kings, but fear not yet to take upon what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty, and yet seem cold. The time you may so hoodwink, we have willing dames enough, there cannot be the vulture in you to devour so many as will to greatness dedicate themselves, finding it so inclined. With this there grows, in my most ill-composed affection, such a stanchless avarice that I wear, I king, I could, start, I could cut off the nobles of their land, desire his jewels in this other's house, and my more having would be as a source to make me hunger more, than I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. Um... Malcolm here says, I admit that Macbeth is all of these horrible things, um, but he said that there is no end, absolutely none to my sexual desires, and that no woman that lived in the castle could satisfy his lust, and that his desires would overbear his um, restraints, and it would be better for Macbeth to rule than for someone like him. And Macduff says, very wisely that endless greed and lust in a man's nature is a kind of tyranny it has caused the downfall of many kings he says but don't be afraid to take the crown that belongs to you um, he believes that M Malcolm will be able to satisfy his pleasures in a spacious plenty as there are enough women to satisfy those pleasures for him um, he says that your lust cannot be so strong that you'd use up all the women willing to give themselves to the king once they find out he wants them. And at the bottom here, Malcolm says, um, along with these things, being full of lust, I'm also incredibly greedy. Um, he says, if I become king, I would um, steal the nobles' lands, their jewels, um, their houses from another. He said that the more that I had, the greedier I would grow. Um, and he said that he would destroy anyone so he could get hands on their wealth. So this is Malcolm, again, pretending to be worse than Macbeth to persuade Macduff into a open show of his loyalty. OK, let's get a few annotations down. Right. Can we please highlight um, bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden and malicious? smacking of every sin that has a name. And we will also highlight this boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny.
Right, that's the only annotations we're going to get down for this page. Oh, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Um, right, this one, um, this is a list of negative adjectives. Negative adjectives that Malcolm is using to um, describe himself, but we know that these are actually adjectives to describe um, Macbeth, negative adjectives that are um, commonly ascribed to Macbeth. And boundless and temperate in nature is tyranny, is Macduff is being critical of Malcolm here, um, which I suppose is part of the plan. Um, as if these things at the top here, these adjectives that are normally ascribed to Macbeth, by Macduff criticising those things, he is actually openly criticising um, Macbeth as well. Critical of such characteristics. Okay, pause if you need a second because we're going to move on. Right, um, sorry, I thought I missed something, but I think we're okay. Okay, this avarice sticks deeper, grows with more pernicious root than summer seeming lust, and it hath been the sword of our slain kings. Yet do not fear, Scotland hath poisons to fill up your will of your mere own. All these are portable with our graces weighed. But I have none, the king becoming graces as justice, verity, temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, lowliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude. I have no relish of them but abound in the division of each several crime acting in many ways. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, confound all unity on earth. O oh, Scotland, Scotland, if such a one be fit to govern, speak, I am, as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live, a nation miserable with an entitled tyrant, bloody sceptred, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again. Okay, up here says Macduff says um, this greed you're talking about is worse than lust because you won't outgrow it. Um, and again, this is something that has been the downfall of many kings. Um, he said that the bad qualities here are bearable when balanced against your good side. So he's again trying to justify to Malcolm that um, he would actually be a good king and these things are manageable potentially. But that Malcolm responds, still trying to persuade him that he is not a good king. He has no good sides. All of these positive attributes there, um, he doesn't have a trace of them. And it's, it's, it says instead that he, um, if he had the power, I would take world peace and throw it down to hell. And Macduff responds, oh, Scotland, Scotland. Um, Malcolm says, if someone like me is fit to be king, let me know. I really am exactly as I have described myself to you. And um, Macduff then responds, fit to govern, fit to be king, not even fit to live. Um, and then he um, um, laments um, the downfall of Scotland if Malcolm was king. He said that, um, he says that, where, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Um, when will we see peace in Scotland again? And this little speech at the bottom continues. Um, but before we do that, let's get some annotations down um, for this screen here. The only one I think I want to get down for this is when McD Macduff says fit to govern. This is the main kind of purpose of this scene here. Um, he cannot accept Malcolm for everything that Malcolm has said that he is. He's lustful and he's greedy. And so he reveals his honesty 
and loyalty. Pause here if you need a second, because we're going to switch over now, carry on with Macduff's speech at the bottom there. Okay, since that, the tru truest issue of thy throne by his own interdiction stands accursed and thus blaspheme his breed, thy royal father was a most sainted king, the queen that bore thee, oftener upon her knees than on her feet, died every day she lived, fare thee well. These evils thou repeatest upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. O my breast, I hope, ends here. And let's just finish off um, understanding this section here. Um, he says, um, The man who has legal right to the throne, by his own admission, is a cursed man, and he's a disgrace to the royal family. Um, he said that your mother spent more time on her knees in prayer than she did standing up and she lived a life of absolute piety and your father was a most sainted king a virtuous king he says that the evils that you have described inside yourself have driven me out of scotland forever but oh my heart your hope is dead there is nothing of um hope left for scotland and here is where malcolm reveals um his test and his true self so he says macduff this noble passion child of integrity hath from my soul wiped the black scruples re reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor devilish macbeth by many of these trains have sought to win me into his power and modest wisdom plucks me from over credulous haste but god above deal between thee and me for even now i put myself to thy direction and I'd speak to my own detraction, here abjure the taints and blames I laid upon myself, for strangers to my nature. I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what was mine own, and no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil to his fellow, and delight no less in truth than life. My first full speaking was this upon myself. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's to command, whether indeed before they hear a poach, old Seward with ten thousand warlike men, already at point was setting forth. Um, Macduff says um, that this noble passion is passionate outburst, which proves that you are a child of integrity, um, has removed my doubts about you and made me realise that you really are a true and honourable man. He says that the devil Macbeth has tried so many times to trick me and lure me into his power um, but with God as a witness, I will let myself be guided by you, he says, and I take my back, I take back everything that I've said and all the bad things that I said, because none of these flaws are really part of my character, um, he said, and then he begins to um, contradict everything he says, um, that he is, um, he's never told a lie, um, that he doesn't really care about the material, what was my own he has um never been jealous about anyone else's possessions he's never broke a promise he wouldn't betray the devil um himself he said i love truth as much as i love life um the lies i told about my character are actually the first false words that i've ever spoken and the person who i really am is ready to serve you and our poor country so let's just get a few brief anima animations, annotations down for this. Oh, why, why does it keep doing that? It's really irritating me. Um, so let's get um, this highlighted, please, all down here. Let's get that highlighted. And let's also, also get this top bit highlighted here. Okay, so this is um, where Malcolm reveals his plan and his true self. And this bit at the bottom is where he reveals everything about himself. And there's a sense of relief here that he um, no longer has to lie and deceive. And so this is a sense of relief. Okay, pause here if you need to, because we're going to move on. 
Um, he finished now altogether, and the chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel. Um, why are you silent? He said, now we'll fight Macbeth together. Such welcome and unwelcome things at once, tis hard to reconcile. He says, it's hard to make sense of such different stories. Enter a doctor. Well, more anon comes the king forth, I pray you. Um, he asks if King Edward, the king of England, is coming out. Aye, sir, there are a crew of wretched souls that stay his cure. Their malady convinces the great assay of art, but at his touch such sanctity hath heaven given his hand. They present him, they, they presently amend. I thank you, doctor. Um, what's the disease that he means? Um, this kind of seems slightly irrelevant. He just says that um, the, um, the king is being waited on by a crowd of um, sick people um, who think that the king can heal them immediately um, because of the power granted to him by heaven. Um, and Macduff asks, what's this disease that he means? Malcolm says, "'Tis called the evil, a most miraculous work in his good king, um, which often since my here remain in England I have seen him do, how he solicits heaven, himself best known, but strangely visited people, all swollen and ulcerous, pitiful to the eye. Amid despair of surgery he cures, hanging a gold stamp upon their necks, but on with holy prayers. Um, and tis spoken to the succeeding royalty he leaves, the healing benediction with the strange virtue. He hath a heavenly gift of prophecy, and sundry blessings hang upon his throne that speak him full of grace. Um, he says that the illness is evil, um, and that Edward apparently has a healing touch, um, and that he receives this gift from heaven. Um, so let's highlight that bit first and then we'll carry on reading because this is the separate kind of section of the scene it's when the scene um shifts to um Macduff and the murder of his family um so let us highlight please um how he solicits heaven himself best known um and then let's also highlights um here he have a heavenly gift of prophecy to speak him full of grace all of these signs mark him as a man who has been graced um by god so um his ability to cure shows um choice by god which obviously links to the divine rights of kings choice by god not of god there you go okay um and let's carry on reading this little bottom bit here um ross enters who is just another attendant lord um, see who comes here, my countryman, but yet I know him not. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. I know him good, good God, but times removed, that means that make us strangers, sir. Amen. Um, they welcome Ross in, and Malcolm has forgotten who Ross is over the um, time that he spent in England. Stand Scotland where it did. Um, he asked Scotland um, the same way as we left it. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself, it cannot be called our mother but our grave where nothing but who knows nothing is once seen to smile where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are mar are made not marked where violent sorrow seems and modern ecstasy the dead man's nails and is there scarce asked for who and good men's lives expire before the flowers and their caps dying or are they sicken a relation too nice and yet too true what's the newest grief that of an hour's age doth his the speaker each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? Why well, and all my children well too. Obviously we know that's not true. Um, Ross here just says um, that Scotland is no longer the land that we were born. It's a land that where we will die. Um, no one ever smiles. Everyone just sighs and groans and shrieks. Um, when the funeral bells, when the funeral bells ring, no one asks who has died anymore. Um, and Macduff says, um, this sounds so true um, because of what we know about Macbeth. Malcolm says, what is the newest news? 
Um, he said, even news an hour old is old news every minute another awful thing happens. And then Macduff asks how his wife is. And Ross says, um, well, and also that his children are well. And um, Macduff responds to Ross claiming that his children and his wife are well by saying the tyrant has not battered at their peace. No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. But not a eh, of your speech, how goes it? When I came hither to transport the tidings which I have heavily borne, there ran a rumour of many worthy fellows that were out, which was to my belief witness the rather, for that I saw the tyrant's power afoot. Now is the time of help your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses be it their comfort we are coming to the gracious england have lent us good seward and ten thousand men an older and a better soldier none that christendom gives out would i could answer this comfort with the like but i have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them um here ross um claims that there are many men that are willing to fight against macbeth and that Macduff and Malcolm's presence in Scotland would create more soldiers and even women would fight. Malcolm says, let them feel comfort that we are coming with 10,000 men. And Ross says that I wish that I could um, answer with something that would comfort you, but I only have bad news, which obviously refers to the murder of um, Macduff's family. So we're just going to get one annotation for this scene, with well, this screen, sorry. Highlight that, please. And there is a sense here that Ross is avoiding revealing the truth until he is certain that Macduff has been persuaded by Malcolm to join them. So let's get that down. Avoid revealing truth until certain that Macduff has been persuaded. Okay, pause here if you need a second because we're going to move on. What concern they, the general cause, or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest, but in it shares some woe, though the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me, quickly let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue for ever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet by they heard. Hum, I guess at it. Castle is surprised, your wife and babe savagely slaughtered to relate to the manner or on the quarry of these murdered deer to add to the death of you. Merciful heaven, watch man, never pull your heart upon your brows, give sorrow words, the grief that does not speak, whispers the overfraught heart, and bids it break. Macduff says, is it a general cause, a general problem, or is it um, about one of us? Um, Ross says that it's about you alone, Macduff, but we will share in your pain. Ross says, please do not despise me, don't hate me for sharing this. And Ross proceeds to explain what has occurred to Macduff. And Malcolm says that um, Macduff should never pull your heart upon your brows. Um, he, he should feel grief and he should feel sorrow. Okay, let's get a few annotations down. Can you highlight savagely slaughtered, please? And also murdered deer. Think about what method is being used in that annotation there. And you should have realised that it is alliteration. And the alliteration here is used by Shakespeare to increase the horror of the deed. The deed being the murder of Macduff's wife and children. And here the fact that they are being described as deer indicates that they are helpless 
against the murderers indicates helplessness. And this kind of links to um, Madoff's son being referred to as an egg and young fry. Pause if you need a second, because we're going to move on. My children too, wife, children, servants, all that can be found, and I must be from thence my wife killed too. I have said, be comforted, let's make us medicines to our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children, all my pretty ones, did you say all, oh hell kite, all what all am I, pretty chickens in their dam, at one fell swoop, dispute it like a man. Macduff continuously questions the facts um, about what has occurred. Malcolm said that we will get revenge, so you can be comforted in that thought. And he says to him, dispute it like a man, take this like a man. Let's get some annotations down. Can you highlight, please, my children too and my wife killed too? Can we also highlight Oh Hell Kite and My Pretty Chickens? And then with your pen, can you please circle the repetition of the word all in that, please? Pause if you need a second. So these questions indicate um, that Macduff cannot accept the truth about what's happened. Questions suggest inability to accept truth. And Macbeth here is referred to as a hell kite, which is a bird of prey metaphor for Macbeth and we'll just put in brackets bird of prey just as a reminder in case we forget there's a lot of um, imagery relating to birds which we will look at in a bit more detail but all you need to know now is that the Hellkite is referencing Macbeth and obviously the chickens are referencing um, Macduff's children and um, the dam references his wife and the juxtaposition here between the hell kite the bird of prey and these pretty chickens um, kind of increases their vulnerability so juxtaposition of Macbeth and children highlights their vulnerability. All of these things on this page that we've annotated are methods. These are methods that we can analyse. Metaphor, questions, juxtaposition, and this here is repetition. Um, which shows Macduff's disbelief about what has occurred cannot believe that all his children and his um, wife is dead. Pause if you need a second, because we're going to move on to the last slide. Okay. I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part, sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine, fell slaughter on their souls, heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword, let grief convert to anger, blunt not the heart, enrage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes, and brag it with my tongue, but gentle heavens, cut short all intermission front to front. Bring now this feed of Scotland and myself, within my sword's length set him if he scape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly, come go we to the king, our power is ready, our lack is nothing but our leave, Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments, receive what cheer you may, the night is long that never finds the day. Macduff says, I have no shame in feeling these emotions as a man, and he refers to himself as sinful, um, claiming that he is the reason that they are dead. Um, he said that Malcolm says, let this grief convert 
to anger, become anger and sharpen your sword, ready for revenge. Rudolph said, yeah, I could sit and I could cry like a woman, um, or I can get revenge. And he will do that by bringing the, um, by facing, face to face, um, the fiend of Scotland, so Macbeth, um, with, within his sword's length, so within the reach of his sword. And he says that we, um, we can go and fight, we are ready. Macbeth is vulnerable um, and we have God's backing. We are his agents on earth to restore um, peace. And that the night is long that never finds the day. A new day is coming. Let's get our final annotations for this scene. Can we please highlight, but I must also feel it as a man. Oh, I could pay the woman with mine eyes. Bring now this fiend of Scotland and myself and get the front to front bit there as well. And the night is long that never finds the day. Okay, there's a hint in this top line here that Duff does not feel any shame in showing his emotion. No shame. In showing emotion which is obviously against the gender expectations of a man but then here he says that i could cry like a woman but i'm not going to and he's going to instead fight um so ultimately he conforms to the gender expectations Um, by vowing to seek revenge instead of showing his emotion. And this is a hint at something that's happening in the future. And we know that the literary term for that is foreshadowing. And we're going to shorten that as FS and this foreshadows um, the conflict again between Macduff and Macbeth and there has been a few instances of foreshadowing Macduff and Macbeth but this also this almost solidifies it and here at the bottom the night is long that never finds a day a new day indicates that there will be no more darkness and we know that darkness represents evil so by a new day coming to Scotland, there will be no more darkness, there will be no more evil, um, which hints at the end of Macbeth's reign of evil. So I'm actually just going to rub this top annotation out just so we have a little bit more room because this annotation is quite big. Let's get rid of that quickly. And then we are going to write. Um, metaphorical darkness over Scotland will come to an end and peace will be restored, this peace will be restored by way of Macduff and Malcolm and their army.